Open up InDesign by clicking the ID icon on your dock. And when this page opens up, you will click New and OK. Just so you know, most people print the stuff that they make in InDesign. And so this margin right here um, is the border for printing. So anything that's inside will get printed. Anything that's outside this margin will likely not get printed. As you're working, make sure that the stuff that you're making is only inside of this. We're going to start uh, by looking at the tools panel um, and clicking on the T type tool. Create a text box and write your name. Select your name. Choose any interesting font that you like and change the size. Um, over here are different windows with extra tools. Just so you guys know, the layers panel is not a big thing in InDesign. We probably won't be using that, but we will be using stroke and color a lot. So I'm going to double click on this T right here, and I'm able to change the color of my name. I want to add a border to my name, so I'm going to click on the selection tool. So the text is no longer selected, but now just the, the border of the text box is. If I put my mouse over these things, the first one says fill, the second one says stroke. Fill adds the background color. And stroke will add a border. And up here where it says one point, um, that can change the, the size of the border. Um, and right here is the kind of border that you have. I'm going to select the text. And up here in the top right are different alignments. For this assignment, I'm just going to center alignment. But one thing that we notice is that the text is at the top instead of in the middle. Um, so I'm going to select my text again. And I can go up to Object. Click on Text Frame Options, and right here is how I can vertically align it. So right now, the alignment is at the top. I'm going to align it to the center. OK. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to my instructions. And you're going to click on this link right here for a poetry website. We just need a block of text for this assignment. So look through the poems, choose one poem that you like. Select the poem and click Command C, Command C to copy it. Go back to InDesign, click on the T again, create a new text box, and do Command V to place the text inside. One thing that could happen if you make your text box really small is that when you place the text, this red plus sign comes up. And this is just telling you that because your text box is too small, you're not able to see all the text. So you would just need to make it larger. We're going to practice changing the colors on this too. So select all of the text. Double click right here. Change the color. Click on your selection tool. Double click on fill. Add a background color and add a border color and increase the size of the border if you want. Okay. The next thing we're going to add are two photos of places that you want to travel to. So I'm going to go to Google Chrome and I'm going to search for Mongolia, which is a place that I really want to go to, and images. Go to Tools, Size, and Large. And choose two photos that you want to include. Um, don't, don't just drag the photos to the desktop. Make sure that you are dragging them into the period drive that's on your desktop. This is really important for InDesign specifically 
because InDesign sometimes has problems if it can't find the original photo. Okay, so when you have your two photos, go back to InDesign and you're just going to drag them into InDesign. When you click back on InDesign, you're gonna see that your cursor now has that picture attached to it. Just click to place it. It will come up full size. So that means that you're able to make it smaller but not any bigger or else it will be blurry. If you try to resize it, you see that it didn't actually resize, it just cropped the image. Uh, do Command Z to go back. This time we're going to hold down the command and shift keys to resize the picture. And click somewhere around it. Don't, don't click on that circle. Click somewhere around it to drag the picture. If you click on the circle, you see that the border changed from blue to orange. And if you try to move it from here, it, it moves the picture, but it, but it doesn't actually move the frame. So if that happens, just click click somewhere outside of that picture and then click back on it and you're able to move it around again. Do the same thing with the second photo. When you click on InDesign, the picture will come up with the cursor. Do Command Shift to resize it. Um, the last thing you're going to add is either a line or a shape. To add a line, you will just click on the line tool, draw a line somewhere. You can change the color up here. You can change the size of the line right here. You can change the type of the line right here. Um, the pen tool allows you to make like pointy lines like that. The pencil tool allows you to make actual like drawings. And the rectangle tool, if you hold down, you can see that it has the rectangle, the ellipse, and the polygon. Um, you're able to add other shapes like that. Okay. So you choose one or all of these things to add to your layout. Um, and now I have all this stuff on my layout, but my name is covered up. My poem is halfway covered up. And so what I need to do now is take some time to align everything. Um, I, I will need to move everything around, um, resize things so that I'm able to actually see everything. And that will take a little bit of time. Um, if you want to bring something to the front, Select the object, click Object, Arrange, and Bring to Front. Um, I'm not going to move all these things around now, but you guys will have to. Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. When you feel like your layout is all good, when nothing is overlapped, when you don't have like weird white space right here, um, you are going to save your work by doing Command and S. You want to make sure that it's being saved in your period drive. You're gonna rename it your name. Um, just rename it like InDesign Practice. And it should be saved as an InDesign document. Um, and so InDesign documents are like Photoshop documents. If you're in the middle of working on it, you, it should be saved as an InDesign document. And when, when you double click to open that InDesign document, it will open directly into InDesign. When you have completely finished your work though, you're going to go to File, Export, um, and you're going to save it as a um, as an Adobe PDF. Um, interactive or print doesn't really matter for this assignment. Um, click Save and Export. Great. Um, and when you turn your work into Google Classroom, um, make sure that you are turning in the PDF, not the InDesign file. The InDesign file will, will not be able to work if it gets turned into Google Classroom. 